My name is Rick Tolini. I work for the Auto Coupler Torpedo Company that's based in Titusville, Pennsylvania. In the early days of Pennsylvania, where the oil business started here in the United States, discovering oil was kind of an accidental discovery. Edwin Drake was the first person to come up with the idea of drilling a commercial oil well for the purpose of producing oil. And that was in the wonderful city of Titusville, Pennsylvania. Folks said, boy, if he hit it in Titusville, it's got to be uh, all along Oil Creek. And uh, the boom was on. The first idea that uh, I'm aware of where a uh, fellow got the idea for stimulating uh, wells with torpedoes was a fellow by the name of uh, Colonel Edward Augustus Roberts. During the Civil War, the Battle of Fredericksburg, Colonel Roberts saw shells bursting in mill races and he saw the tremendous damage they were doing when the shell went off underwater and he says, hey, this might actually work if I explode this torpedo in a well uh, to increase the production, increase some fractures. Uh, even then, I think they understood that uh, you needed fractures. There were other folks that shot uh, wells to a very minor degree, but the results were very mixed. The notable failure I can think of is John Wilkes Booth, the fellow that shot Abraham Lincoln. He decided to take a chance at making some additional money by investing in an oil well in uh, northwestern Pennsylvania. And he decided to uh, shoot it with explosives and, uh, and ruin the well, caved it in, and never made another drop. Colonel Roberts came to uh, Titusville in 1865 trying to get someone to take an interest in letting him torpedo a well. The idea for a torpedo in, in shooting an oil well or a water well was unique. Now, of course, considering the other failures, people were reluctant to let the colonel do this. Finally, someone let him uh, go ahead and experiment to produce oil. The earliest torpedo in 1865 was black powder. 1867, they started using nitroglycerin. Well, nitroglycerin's probably about uh, 10 times more powerful than black powder. It did a much better job of breaking uh, big rock into little rock than uh, you know black powder did. It's an extremely sensitive explosive. Because of that sensitivity, it was very uh, dangerous to handle. Colonel Roberts had a hand winch that had rope on it. On the end of the rope, he had a tin torpedo that held the nitroglycerin. The operator would pour the nitroglycerin into the torpedo and lower the charge down into the well. He would have to lower the torpedo in because if you drop the torpedo, uh, a nitroglycerin torpedo impacting uh, either oil or water would most of the time blow up. People were literally incinerated by nitroglycerin shots, so you had to be very careful. They had uh, cast iron wakes, they, they called go devils. Looked like a, uh, a cross, a long cylindrical cross. He dropped that down the uh, well to a percussion detonator on the Roberts torpedo that contained black powder or nitroglycerin and uh, the shot would go off. These wells that uh, they were shooting with torpedoes were making many times more oil than what they were making when they were originally drilled. Colonel Roberts obtained a patent on torpedoing wells. Roberts was charging uh, inordinate uh, rates to shoot uh, torpedoes. He hired an army of detectives, Pinkertons, to enforce his uh, 
patent rights uh, against individuals that weren't paying the Roberts fees. Mood lighting was a term that originated in Pennsylvania during these years of uh, uh, patent violation. Moonlighter was someone that was torpedoing wells illegally at night uh, against the Roberts patent. These Pinkertons were so thick like flies in the woods, if they saw one of these Goyle gushers, they were on you. So moonlighting morphed into our uh, common language today. Roberts made an absolute fortune in Titusville. I believe uh, some of his heirs are still spending that money. After 1883, uh, the patents expired. Congress refused to renew them, and uh, anybody could shoot a well. Using nitroglycerin to stimulate oil wells was terribly dangerous. You had no regulation. The mind of man was free to experiment and create chaos and also to create genius. Hundreds, and I mean literally hundreds of people were killed throughout the United States torpedoing wells. Go, devil, go! Get back! A number of incidents where five, six people were killed uh, by uh, shrapnel would go out hundreds of feet from the well site. Many of them were spectators. It's hard to fathom, but people love, uh, love being near uh, uh, power. Shooting of wells with explosives was an industry that uh, had probably well over a hundred torpedo companies throughout uh, the oil states of California, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Ohio, Illinois, I mean, you name it. That nitroglycerin use in 1867 that Roberts did and others did increased the world's gross domestic product and standard of living many times over catapulted the U.S. and other nations into the industrial age. But uh, the torpedo business died out west because of uh, hydraulic fracturing uh, after about 1947, and it was definitely dead in the 1950s. In my own memory, the last uh, nitroglycerin torpedo that we shot was in 1990. Okay, that's a well for cranberry oil. It's got 90 quarts of nitromethane in it. There she went. Any kind of innovation takes place, whether it's in the oil business, or some other businesses, we are trying to get the most productivity that we can to enhance the well-being of society. Let's face it, if you go from one person loading a well and making a 20 barrel a day well to, you know, scores of people making thousands of barrels of oil, the scale and the improvement for mankind is limitless. I still know a few uh, fellows that are older than me that still say, Rick, there's nothing like that liquid nitro for stimulating an oil well. Oh yeah, man, I hear you talking. <laughs>